as you see here, they're well being built. Um, the locals used to walk miles uh, to get clean, safe water, but now it's getting built right in front of the doorstep, which I think is a great thing. And you can see the women are out here, the men are out here, they're very happy to have this here. Please donate generously to this fantastic first relief project by Penny Appeal. Donate online. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. You are here with Joshua Salam. I'm your host of a new show that we're trying out called Think About It. And every day we're going to do this in the month of Ramadan where we're going to have a guest on to talk about something beautiful from the Quran. I'll give a little talk that I think will be fun and exciting and interesting, I hope. We're going to play a game so that it's just something light for you to enjoy every day of Ramadan. Join in, tune in, Dean.tv, where you can think about it. We're in the Gambia right now, and we have a very special program. For $45, you can feed an entire family. And this food, especially in the month of Ramadan, is going to be so helpful because obviously you're going to get the reward of feeding the fasting person as well. So for $45, you can help feed a family for an entire month. And we're doing this in 13 countries. Find out more at the Penny Appeal USA website, pennyappealusa.org. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Welcome back to Think About It, where every day during this month of Ramadan we're going to be exploring aspects of the Quran, giving you little things to think about from the beauty of the Quran, al kareem from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But today I have a guest that's going to help out with that. He is a Quran teacher or an Arabic teacher. He helps people understand the Quran. He's a good friend of mine. I got a little story that I can tell you about him from way back when. But first, without further ado, let me introduce you to Ismail Ibn Ali. Assalamu alaikum, man. Wa alaikum salam, wa What's going on? Not much. Thanks for having me on the show. So you know the story that I'm going to tell about you is, um, how many years ago was it in Boston? Uh, eight now. Eight years ago. Eight years ago. Eight years ago. Eight years ago. Okay, I'm going to tell myself this is going to be funny because I'm, I'm, I'm a student of yours in level what? Level one. Now I'm a student level one. Eight years ago, I was a student in what? Level two. No, you were level two. Oh, I was two. You were one. You were two. I was one. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, I was level one, and, and Ismail was level two. And uh, so he was just like a little bit ahead of me. I was like, man, okay, yeah, I can catch this guy. And life catches up with you. You start slacking off, and I run back into him. And he's like, yeah, you should come to my class. And I was like, what? You, what, what? You, you're teaching now? I was like, alhamdulillah. So it gives me something to aspire to, and now you're an instructor in the same program that you were a student in uh, many years ago. I mean, we're always students. Of course. But so I wanted you to uh, tell us a little bit about this program that you guys have, Fawake, what it means, what it's trying to do, uh, and especially as it relates to Ramadan. Yeah, so alhamdulillah, I mean, uh, I, like you said, uh, in 2010 started learning Arabic with Fawake. Mm -hmm. I just knew it as a summer program that if you had a free summer, Mm -hmm. uh, you could go to either DC or that year they had it in Boston as well. Those are the only two options. Uh, yeah, I think that year they also had Indianapolis. Okay. But ever since 2012, it's just been in the DC area okay. as the as the base. All right. Um, but uh, basically, their premise was, hey, give us you know a month, and we'll help you understand some of the basics of Arabic and the Quran, mm -hmm. so that when you go back home you can start to read the Qur'an and start to analyze the ayat. You may not get everything, but when you go from zero to 25%, that mm -hmm. makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Then when you start to learn more, you go up to 33, and then you get to 50, and you're like, whoa, okay, I can, I can read a page and understand half the page. So the zero to 25, I mean, just relatively, what do you feel like, how long did it take you to feel like you, you, could, you were at like 25%? To be honest, man, that, that, after that month, I was like about 20%. Oh, man. And I knew that to unlock the rest, I just needed my dictionary. My good old right. friend Hans Wehr needed Hans to be right Wehr. by me. You right? speak a little German too, so you can even put the ha accent Hans on Wehr. Hans Wehr. Hans Wehr. Right, right. Yeah, so um, after doing that one month program, I, uh, I had a decent amount of background in the basics. And as a teacher, I was training to be a teacher at that time, getting mm -hmm. my uh, finishing undergrad with um, 
uh, my uh, minor in education, mm -hmm. and then I ended up doing a master's in, in ed. And so I started, as a teacher, I started being like, okay, if I start teaching this back, mm -hmm. it'll really help me solidify what I understood. So I ended up becoming a TA for Fawake. Mm -hmm. Teacher's uh, assistant. Yeah, yeah. and uh, about two years later. And then since there, I just started teaching the level, b beginner levels for mm -hmm. Fawake uh, in the DC area, because I just moved there. And then slowly, I realized that as I was teaching, I had to refer to higher level content mm -hmm. to then teach you know, basic content or mm. foundational concepts. Because you have to have a bigger picture to be able to give students exactly what, what they I think, need. <clears throat> I think as a student in your class, I think that's what you bring to the table is without knowing it, you have this education background. So it's not just you like, okay, teaching what I know in Arabic. You're doing like different teaching. Uh, uh, Pedagogy. Okay, explain that's what that. that how, that's, how, the, that's the technical term. Okay, what, right? what is that, and how do you bring it to the table? Yeah, pedagogy is just the idea that there are techniques that you use mm -hmm. in the classroom to get the most out of students to help them do all the thinking. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, what happens is teachers will do all the thinking for the students mm -hmm. and and lead them to where they want to go, but the students haven't done all the work in their brain to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And the students figure that out when they go home. They're like, shoot, I got this in class, right, right. but I am completely lost. That's what I'm supposed to do right now. That, that happens a lot of time in math and, and, yeah. and other subjects. You know, so they follow teachers, but the teachers have to have techniques to help you, um, you know, to, 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 to give you just a little nudge you need to mm -hmm. think how to think through reading an ayah or how to break down a given short surah or whatever it is that we're, you know, that we're reading. <clears throat> All right, here's what I'm going to bring to you. In my... Um, in my studies of uh, other faiths, you know, when I was uh, studying, you know, Christian faith at the, at the seminary, learning yeah. about that, I learned about this history where there was a period of time where the the priests and the the people who were scholars of the of the Bible mm -hmm. uh, did not let the common Lay folk people. read it. Yep. Right. You remember that? So not that you were there. I mean, <laughs> you're not as old as Jesus, but uh, uh, <laughs> the, they would they would keep it from the people because they felt, mm. and this is a logical argument that you know you guys reading it you don't have <clears throat> the knowledge that we have you might misinterpret it and then the lay people are going to go astray mm -hmm. just reading bits and pieces and not understanding so it was always there for the people of knowledge mm. to read and interpret the bible for the people yes and i think i get that a lot of times with the quran i hear that about people like you know you don't know the arabic you know this this is so deep it's so rich you know what would you say to people who are trying to approach the quran but they don't speak classical Arabic. Yeah. They, they, they're stuck in level one, uh, <laughs> you know, or whatever it is. How, how would you encourage them? Is there any warning? Is there any encouragement to approaching the Quran? You got any advice? Yeah, no, this is definitely, we get that feedback all the time from people who are not uh, familiar with our program. They mm -hmm. say, well, how can you teach uh, regular people who have 40 hour, you know, a week jobs, I don't have time to learn classical Arabic and learn fiqh, you know, jurisprudence and sirah, you know, biography of the prophet and all these other things. And they're like, how can you teach them if they're not going to be able to learn everything to then do their own proper No, analysis? no, 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 no. I, I was just speaking hypothetically. You're telling me that people actually have said that to you guys. Absolutely. Muslims have said that to Muslims you. Muslims have said that to how us. How can you teach these Arabic people when they don't have time to really grasp the whole Quran? Yeah. Yeah, wow. we get that. We get that. I mean, Hamla, it's a lot less now, mm. but people will will make those arguments and say, well, you know. Um, what, our, did, what did they expect those people to do? Yeah, so our argument to them is kind of like that. It's like, yeah, we're not telling them to go in front of the, uh, give a khutbah on the mm -hmm. tafsir of Surah Duha. Mm -hmm. We're not saying to do that. Mm -hmm. But there's an experience that someone can have and a connection they can have to the Quran mm -hmm. that, yeah, it may be a level one experience. Mm -hmm. But you can't deny the level one experience, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, Ibn Abbas, who the cousin of the Prophet, peace be upon him, mm -hmm. you know, he, he said that the... Bring it, Ismail. <laughs> bring it. <laughs> no, he just said that the, you know, the, the phrase that is used is the Quran is pregnant with meaning, mm -hmm. right? Like there's just so much meaning there. There's external meanings, internal mm -hmm. meanings. And each and every one of us, Allah will reveal to us the meaning that we need in our life at that time. Mm. And a lot of people are afraid to engage with the Quran. Like I had a sister once tell me, you know, I don't read the Quran. She was starting out um, tutoring with me. Mm -hmm. She said, I don't read the Quran. I said, why? She said, because look where she was coming from. She said, I'm, 
I know it's supposed to sound really beautiful and I don't feel I have the right voice and the right knowledge of Tajweed to do it it's right mm. and so for 30 years she said she didn't read she didn't try to read the Quran in Arabic Wow <laughs> and, and, and so you know where that comes well I think I know where that comes from I think that comes from a lot of people who recite Quran really well they have all the the, the best Tajweed the best Tartil and they tell people like you have to honor this Quran mm -hmm. like just even one uh, mistake you could be changing the meeting yeah. and don't do that with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you hear that enough uh, and yeah, you get enough, scared you get scared like no I don't want to be messing up the words of Allah you know and and <clears throat> so again like how does Fawakir have you had any students who have gone from that being afraid to approach the Quran either in recitation or afraid of it in, in trying to understand it because they might understand it wrong because they don't have the full picture Framework. have they gone from that to like wow you know I was reading the Quran and yeah yeah definitely I have a brother you know what he does is he's very interested in how the Quran how a lot through the Quran gives you perspective on different topics mm. so he looked at the word for example in the Quran Allah uses instead of using the word wife or husband mm -hmm. to refer to someone he uses the word spouse Zoj. Mm -hmm. But Which Zoj, like yeah, literally it means pair. pair, pair. Right? Aha! I said it before he did. Pair, <laughs> level one, let's go. You right. got it, you got it. So he was interested to see how the word Zoj is used throughout the entire Quran. Mm -hmm. Because Allah also uses it for things like plants and animals. Mm -hmm. And he says some things are in multiple pairs. Mm -hmm. And so he was just intrigued. So what he did, look at my man, he took a Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And he went through every usage of Zoj, mm. just just wrote it all down or typed it all out, mm -hmm. and then he looked at what were the eyes before and after for each usage, okay. to then come up with could he find a trend for how the word Zoj was being used, mm -hmm. and he was in level three at the time, mm -hmm. and he was just like every time I looked I kept finding things I wasn't expecting, and so when I wrote it down my perception of Zoj completely like change like he said you know Zawj in the Quran is not gender specific mm -hmm. the word itself he realizes is not just for a man or a woman even though in modern Arabic we mm -hmm. say Zawj for like a husband and Zawja for a mm -hmm. for a wife mm -hmm. but the Quran doesn't use it that way mm -hmm. you know so he was just like thinking and he said the fact that I could sit and think about the Quran do this tadabbur and tafakkur that people you know they say do this reflection mm -hmm. But I was always like, what am I supposed to reflect on? How mm -hmm. do I reflect? Right. He's like, just by trying to trace a word in the Quran now, mm. and I have enough Arabic to translate the ayah pretty much on my own, mm -hmm. and then I would just go check to see am I in the right ballpark. Right. Right. It was like eye-opening for him, alhamdulillah. And, alhamdulillah. and that, that's alhamdulillah. what we're going for. We're not saying write a tafsir and publish it. Right. Right? right. What our teacher said is, hey, when you read the Quran, Keep a little diary next to you. Mm -hmm. Call it, you know, my Quran journal, my Quran mm -hmm. diary. And whatever Allah gives you, just write it down. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that you may understand an ayah in level one that's a certain way. Mm -hmm. But when you come back to it after you've learned mafubihi in level three, oh, oh, right? Okay. Or mafulahu in level for three. It. I'm yeah, yeah, for exactly. It. When you learn those things, you'll go mm -hmm. back to the ayah and be like, wow, mm -hmm. there's another thing here. Mm. And uh, that's your interaction with the Quran. That's real. Mm -hmm. It's not. Uh, it's not something that you should shy away from or mm -hmm. be afraid to engage with the Quran. Wow. Uh, because the Quran will open up all kinds of meaning in your life. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. This is the kind of stuff. This month, if nothing else, this show is trying to encourage you to engage the Quran. Whether you're level one, whether you're level. Seven is that level seven yet? <laughs> You're super sane. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, you can. Uh, it's just to read the Quran, and and as he said, it's not like you're going to go and start your own school of thought, but you might have questions even mm -hmm. because of your reading that a scholar didn't think about. You know, and I'm saying that because it happened to me many times. And and one of the guests I'll be trying to bring on the show is Imam Majid from Adam Center to talk about one of the ways that we engage the Quran, where he was talking about something, I thought about it, think about it. I went back and read the Quran, and then I had a question for him, and he was like, oh, Joshua, I never thought of that, right? So the scholars need you to read the Quran, if nothing else but to give them more questions and give them a different perspective. And Fawaka is a, is a program that's trying to do that, so we encourage you guys to look them up. Go to, what's the website? www.fawaka.org. www.fawaka.org. And how do you spell Fawaka? 
F A W A K I H. I meant in Arabic. No, I'm just kidding. So, you know, <laughs> and we've got to tell them what Fawaki means. Oh, people, that's right, that's right. You tell know, the people. Fawaki means fruits. Mm -hmm. And people are always like, why y'all the fruity people? Mm -hmm. You know? Uh -huh. And I'm just like, okay, okay, we get it. But No, you will get many fruits from the Quran. Look. Delicious. Uh, just, just beautiful, you know, that you, you desire to have it. That's the fruits that you're going to get. So I got to take you to every Juma, and you can say that to yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm bored. I'm bored. Hey, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate and, it. And uh, as you guys know, I'm not a scholar, but I hope that you will think about it. We're going to talk about things in the Quran and at least uh, help you and encourage you to engage it. I'll see you at the next segment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Since August 25th of this year, over 600,000 individuals have fled from Myanmar into bordering Bangladesh. They've witnessed crimes against humanity. The United Nations calls what happened in Myanmar textbook definition of genocide, textbook definition of ethnic cleansing. We've been here for the last few months, providing them with access to clean drinking water, providing them with access to primary healthcare services helping them build their shelters, as well as giving them weekly food distribution. We can't fathom what they've witnessed. The ones that have arrived into Bangladesh are the lucky ones. They're now residing in between the 22 to 25 official refugee camps that have now been established. With your continued support, we want to secure their future. We want to stay for the foreseeable future so that we can dig more water wells, so that we can provide them with more medication and more medical advice, so that we can help build more shelters, especially with the winter coming and the cold setting in. Please visit our website to find out more about our work and to support us with your generous donations. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. This is Joshua Salam back with you with the show Think About It. In fact, I'm going to do it like that. Think about it. No, I'm just kidding. So, this is the, the segment of the show where we do just, you know, something a little lighthearted with our guests. You know, and I remember this, this show that I saw on television. I thought it was pretty fun, and the audience gets to engage a little bit. So you guys are going to see a word on the screen. Uh, I have five words that I'm trying to get Ismail to say. Ismail has five words that he's trying to get me to say. And whoever gets the other person to say those, their words wins, right? So that's just, that's just it, just a little game. So you ready to play, Ismail? I'm ready. All right. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. the best player win. May the best player win? Okay. How about... Um, if I win, I'm probably the best player. <laughs> and if I lose, I just had an off game. That's, that's probably All right, bet. <laughs> All right, I'm pretty competitive. All right, here we go. Bismillah. Now, I only get one word to tell you what my word is. So, here we go. Mecca. Kaaba? Ding, 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 ding. That's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah. Ooh. Um... Writing. Book. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, hmm. Uh, Suhoor. Um... Fasting? No, that's okay. <laughs> good guess, good guess. All right. Lapel. 
Okay, the, the first word was writing. I mean, the first clue was writing. Oh, I go back to the same. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Oh, you gotta, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, my bad, my bad. Okay, okay. So, oh, I'm still on the same word. Yeah, yeah, because you threw me off with that one. All right, my but bad. But now you get another word to build Okay, up okay, now I'm, that makes sense. Um, ink. Pen. Yeah. Yay. There you go. All right, all right. I get, I get, I get this you, now. You I, get okay. I get it now. I get it now. Um, so the first clue was Sahur. Sahur, yeah. Man, I didn't think this word would be so hard. Uh, uh. <laughs> good job, good job, Come on, give staff. It. They, Come they on. gave me a good word I could do. Um. Desert. Stop laughing. I hear y'all laughing in the background. <laughs> desert? Sohor and desert? Uh, dates? Yes! Oh. Yes! We think we hear it. We hear it. <laughs> See, the audience is probably like, why would he say desert? It's my guy. All right, two, two. All right. Um, now, since this is the real first clue, lapel. Lapel. Mike? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good, good, good. That's a good clue. <laughs> um, Nikon. Camera? Yes. Ding, 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 ding. Very good. Um, one word. Oh, this is so hard. One <laughs> word. <laughs> Somebody in the audience is probably thinking, yeah, just say that and he'll get it. <laughs> Um, <coughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to do it over too. Uh, fasting. I feel like you've given me this clue before. Oh no, that was one of your answers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fasting. Ramadan. No. Okay. Um, leaf. Tree? Yes. Ding, 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 ding. I got one more word to so go. Is it, is it because I'm a better <laughs> guesser or you're a better clue giver? <laughs> hey, Which one is way, it? Either way, the guest is the winner. <laughs> <laughs> um, ooh, okay. Okay, the first clue was what? The first clue was uh, fasting. Fasting, okay. Second clue is maghrib. Uh, iftar. There you go. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Oh, come on. I didn't even re see this one coming. I, I have a complaint against the, the producers. I, I, I don't know if you're allowed. Anyway. <clears throat> um, it's probably going to take me like five words to get. Anyway. <laughs> um, one word, huh? Amazing. What? <laughs> <laughs> I got to build up to it, man. And I got to build up to it before. I mean, I mean, my fake answer is Kanye West. But, <laughs> <laughs> but my real answer, um, amazing. Uh, uh, there's, there's no way you're going to get it on the first time. All I can think of Unless is Ar like Arabic Ajib. But it, okay. No, yeah, no, no, I got I got nothing. Okay. How many more words you got to go? I got two. Okay, Let's see so if I got to get you time. to get this word before you get it. All right. So I can't obviously say just the translation of it in another language, right? <laughs> oh, so it's an Arabic word. Good clue. No, yeah. no, no, no. It's not Arabic word. Okay, but, okay. Um, <coughs> uh, um, oh, yeah, you couldn't say an Arabic word again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, ta wait, wait uh, minute. Have you given me any clues for this word? No, yet? no, okay. no. It's a new word. And the, the word I'm giving is not the translation. Okay. Okay, but tarawi. Or Tarawih. Wow. Okay, Tarawih happens in Ramadan, happens at night. Uh, 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 Layla to Qadr is not one word. Um, I'm going to say Tarawih. <coughs> Jews? No, that's uh, not it. Okay. Um, oh, my first one was amazing. 
I can't believe I, I'm about like who? There's no way. Um, uh, <laughs> so tight, tight. Uh, oh, and that's not circus. No, like tightrope. Yeah. No, no. Okay. So I'm like I'm building up to it. <laughs> building up to it. Um. <laughs> Uh, raka, and that's not the translation of okay. the word. Yeah, yeah. Tarawih, raka, um, my, I want to say like eight or twenty, but uh, tarawih, uh, raka. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Uh, how much time do I have? All right. Come on, Joshua. Think, think, think. Tarawi, Raka. This one word thing is difficult. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so, <coughs> come on. Um, something that happens around Tarawi time. Araka is a clue. Um, um, Khushu? No. Uh, it's not an Arabic word. All right, anyway. Ah. Uh, so Tyson. Ama oh. <laughs> so amazing, tight, and Tyson. Um. Oh, I think I know another word like that. Okay, go ahead. And it's one word. Yeah. Boxing. No. It's okay. I, I don't expect to get this before you get yours. Go ahead. <laughs> um, okay, how many clues do I have so far? Two. Tarawe Raka. Yeah, you're gonna, I'm going to smack myself because I can't get you to say this. Um, I, I could smack you if you prefer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, man, Tarawe might throw you off. Um, Juma. It's not an Arabic word. It's not an Arabic word. No, no. Because <sighs> I was going to say khatra, but tarawih, raka, juma. <laughs> Why are y'all laughing in the background? <laughs> Do I look like an idiot on camera for not being able to get this word? Oh, man. <laughs> Juma, Raka, Tarawir. Um, cycle? <laughs> no. <laughs> like like Tudaka cycle or something. <sighs> uh, no. All right, let's go. Your word. Conception. What? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, tight, Tyson's conception? I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> I, I have to try a different route. <laughs> Amazing. Tight. Tyson. Conception. Yeah. Brother, what wrong with you, man? <laughs> oh, for those who didn't know, he's, he's from Trinidad, so he can throw a Trini accent out there any time. Uh, that's what that was. Don't try to translate <laughs> that. That. <laughs> that is what that was, but That is what that was. <laughs> yeah. Um... No, it doesn't matter. I, I have to go through about four more words. So just <laughs> put something out there. Conception. <laughs> um, motherhood. <laughs> I don't even know. Okay. All right. I'm going to go that route. All right. Cool. Um, keep going. Okay. Um, pillar. Salah. Well, there's no Arabic word, so. Uh, prayer. Yes. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Man. I wanted to say second pillar for the longest time. <laughs> <laughs> so now you got one more word. Yes, sir. Dang. Okay. Tie game, tie game. Um, <clears throat> Jesus. Hail Mary? Just one word. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's only one word. Hold on, so I can throw that out? No, no, no. <laughs> You said I'm thinking Immaculate Conception, you know, amazing, throwing ah, the ball. Ah, 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 ah. How does 
that? What am I supposed to do with that, producers? Ha <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right, fine, you go, you go. I'm, I'm gonna I'm a keep going that direction, though. I'm gonna keep, I'm a keep going that direction. You go. Stay, stay with me there, though, all right? So, stay oh, with me there. Oh, I think, I still don't get tight. That's the one that really threw me off. <laughs> Forget the past. We stand in the present. I think maybe stand I know what it is. Okay. Um, okay. <sighs> Whoo. Okay, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need, okay. Footwear. Nike? No. Nike? Okay, um, for me, <clears throat> let's forget the past. <laughs> okay. Let's use my first clue as, um, what, was, what were the last two clues I gave? Jesus. And before that? Uh, conception. Okay, we'll use those two as clues. Jesus. Conception. Miracle. Um, in one word. In one word. Can I? I, I want to tell him something, but I'm gonna play fair. I'm gonna play fair. In one word. In one word. Um, I think I already won, right? No. Okay. Go ahead. I mean, I know what you're talking about, but what's S say it? What's you the can trust yourself, the, man? The one word. Go with the gut. I don't know how you say that in Trini. Go with your heart, man. Um, Jesus. Yeah. Conception. Conception. Miracle. Miracle. It's one word. One word. Go with the heart, man. The hot. Your audience is going to think I'm an idiot at this point. <laughs> no, no, they, they know it's a tough word. Um, <sighs> one word? I keep thinking. What do you keep thinking? What do you keep thinking? We got 30 seconds, man. What do you keep thinking? <laughs> I don't even, I, I don't even know, like birth? Okay, now you gave a clue, but fine, keep that. Next, you go. Um, okay, I gave you footwear. Uh-huh. Bathroom. Sandal. Yeah. <laughs> All right, congratulations. That was the game. It's my one, but I think I kind of won because my word was immaculate. So and I said it you earlier? Said, you said it, but you know, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's why I was like, oh, you said it. Hey, you guys, thanks for watching. Oh. Come back next time to watch Think About It when we have amazing guests like Ismail Ibn Ali from Fawaka. See you around.